But let's jump to the New York Times, the New York Times hit piece. Let's go through yeah, their terminology, how they talk about how they're able to maneuver their way into spreading completely slanderous fake news and all allegedly. Can't Let's corroborate. Do it. Let's do it. Yeah, this was a hit piece written. What was it this year or last year? Uh, I'm not sure whether I, I don't have the year in front of me because I have the text from the article in my email. But this is a network of conservative activists mounted a campaign during the Trump administration to discredit perceived enemies. By the way, let's just stop there because we're going to go through this and understand the mendacious innuendo. See, it's not so much that they lie. A lie is an untruth. What they do is they say things, they, they, they lie by omission. They use mendacious innuendo, supposition, half-truths and innuendo to create an inference, right? That it, it, and, I, and I use the analogy of a Picasso painting. You almost have to twist it and read between the lines to, to quite the, the pretzel-like contortions in the first sentence, quote, uh, uh, mounted a campaign during the Trump administration to discredit perceived enemies. Okay. How do they know that's what my motive was? They are attributing a motive. I didn't want, to, that was not my intent. I don't have a desire to, quote, mount a campaign to discredit perceived enemies. And by the way, they selectively edited out, Anna, of this article. What it is that you did? For example, they didn't publish Stuart Crawford's statements, which was quite. What was the quote, Anna, that Stuart Crawford uh, told you? Quote: Resist Trump at every level. And to quote, f shit up. I believe f is what he things. said. Why yes, did they not include that quote? Why did they? Why did they not include the what the State Department official said to you? He said to you in a public place. You weren't mm -hmm. bugging him. You didn't plant. Mm -hmm. You didn't plant. It was devices. actually. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was actually a public DSA meeting. It was a public Democratic Socialist of America meeting. It was it was it was in this like it was like half a bar, half like a, right. a restaurant where we all went to. And, and I want to say this really quickly for those that are wondering, you know, why do we have this Word document up? This is the exact um, article that we copy paste into Word document. I, I'm able to, you know, highlight it. And there's like a paywall. I didn't have time to get the article up. So we're using Word doc, but this is the exact wording that's in the article. But you're right. They don't quote that. They don't quote the fact that he was a confessed communist who is uh, breaking the Hatch Act by, yes. by doing communist work in his office at the Department of State. You would think that the New York Times and the other article, they would be excited that a communist was fired from the Department of State. You'd think. And he was fired. Were, and he was, and, and, the, and this, the, who was the head of the State Department at the time? Um, Mike Pompeo. Mike Pompeo made a statement to Laura Ingram about your journalism. The head of the State Department responded, but by the way, Anna, I if just you met him. Were and he was thankful. <laughs> a resident of of Manhattan. If you um, only read the New York Times, you would not know that Stuart Carafa said, "I forgive the language," but he said, right. "quote I want to fuck shit up at the State Department, and I'm going to violate the Hatch Act by doing so." And Mike Pompeo terminated his. You would not know that. You would not. And why, the question is, why would they omit those revelations and those facts? But let's continue. Quote, perceived yeah. enemies of Trump. We don't know that Stuart was a, I, I don't, that was, <laughs> how do they know that, that that was our intention? I did not state that was my motive. For all they know, I was just trying to unearth government fraud and abuse. And then they say in the second sentence, quote, okay, here's it is. According to documents and people involved in the operations. Well, you're asking me to trust these people. Who are these people? Can I see those documents? Can I see the intonation? Can I can I hear the voices? Can I, I, mean, I mean, okay, anonymous sources are codified in journalism, but you're asking me to trust you, New York Times. And why should I trust you? Because by the way, anonymous sources, you're asking me to trust the publication. Well, well, why would I trust you when you're attributing a false motive to me and you're doctoring out of this very article what Stuart Crocker said? So I don't mind anonymous sources. People say I'm against, I'm not against anonymous sources so long as you give me reason to trust you and you're not giving me any reason to trust you by the end of the first paragraph in this article. Right. By, by, by claiming what your intention is. I mean, you can't do that as a real journalist. That's embarrassing. 